Hello and welcome to another video. Today I've got 84 terabytes of storage sitting right next to me and we're going to be trying out TrueNAS. Without further ado, let's get started. So you may be wondering, why do I have 84 terabytes next to me? And the answer is, because I can. I've got 84 terabytes of storage here from serverpartdeals.com. These are manufacturer recertified drives and they are 14 terabytes each and I have six drives. These are the Mach 2 Exos drives, which means they have two platters in them, each of seven terabytes. So essentially I have 12 hard drives here that are seven terabytes each. And these are all going in this Dell PowerEdge R730 XD server that is going to be running TrueNAS. The server is graciously spec'd out by Tech Mike New York and they are a great server vendor. I highly recommend checking them out. So this project has a few goals. Uh, primarily, I want to replace my aging Linux server that I have running most of my file storage. Uh, it's got about 80 terabytes in it already, uh, but that server is pretty old, I guess. It's a R720 XD. TrueNAS is gonna give me a ton more insight into my hard drives, the status and health of everything, of the RAID arrays, and all that stuff. So my hope is that because I have TrueNAS, I'll be able to protect myself against bit rot and that kind of thing. By me using ZFS, I will also gain the extra speed and performance out of ZFS. And I'll also be able to configure and deploy easy backups with TrueNAS. I have never used TrueNAS before in my life, but today is the first day I'm gonna be trying it out. So I do wanna talk about the cost of all this stuff. So the drives alone were about $958, whatever that equates to per drive. I think it's like $170 a drive or something like that for 14 terabytes. Uh, it was the lowest cost per terabyte. I want to say it was like $2 a terabyte or something. The server itself was just a little less than the drives. Um, and it's got 128 gigabytes of RAM. It's got a 3.3 gigahertz processor. Well, two of them. Uh, I'll put the specs on the screen. It's got a RAID controller that essentially passes the drives through straight to the operating system. It's got a rear flex bay available for the SATA drives. And I think that's all I can think of. Oh, it's also got a 10 gigabit per second network card. It's got two 1100 watt power supplies things stacked and I'm so excited. So one kind of interesting thing about these specific drives is that like I mentioned earlier, they do have the 2x7 terabyte plots on them. Uh, so they are formatted a little differently in terms of how they appear on the computer or on TrueNAS in this case. Um, they will actually show up as individual drives, uh, but the scary thing I guess is you don't want them to be in the same VDEV on ZFS. So ZFS is a kind of like a software defined RAID uh, but it's a little more than RAID. You can look it up on your own time, but ZFS is what I'll be using in this video. Um, there's a script from Level 1 Techs um, that I saw online that will fix this. Essentially, you just gotta make sure that the two seven terabyte disks do not pop into the same VDEV um, together because if you think about it, if you format your VDEV for the ability to lose one drive um, and this drive goes down, then you essentially lose two drives in that VDEV. So it's really important that you actually put some thought into how these are going to uh, be added into the VDEVs. All right, so we've got the server plugged in. Well, mostly monitor hooked up, we're ready to go. So in TrueNAS, you are able to have redundant boot SSDs, and that's what I'm going to do with this thing. So I'm going to find probably two uh, 128 gigabyte SSDs because I think those will probably be best. I'd rather not have to put big SSDs in this thing, especially if they are just for boot drives. Okay, so the system is booted up. We are in the BIOS. I have installed two SSDs that are somewhere around 240 gigabytes each. Um, they should be okay. So we're going into our boot settings here. You can probably see and changing our boot to BIOS boot because I'm assuming that's what we gotta do to install it. So we've got TrueNAS booted up on the server over here. Uh, if we take a look here, uh, this is the TrueNAS installer. So we have the options for the TrueNAS authentication method. We can do an administrative user, which is TrueNAS underscore admin, or we could have a root user, which is not recommended. Uh, so we are going to be using the administrative user of the TrueNAS admin, and I will give it the password that I Okay, so we'll click sign in and we should be into TrueNAS. So I've not configured anything on TrueNAS. Uh, you'll see, here we go. So you'll see we got 125 gigabits, gigabytes. 
free ECC memory. So I literally never looked at a true NAS in my life. So this is just me just essentially raw dogging us at this point. Um, okay, let's go to storage here. So if we go to our disks uh, up at the top, you'll see that we just have apparently one disk right here. It's interesting. And this is why there is actually a post here on the level one text forum where Wendell has nicely shared a script with us uh, that we can use to essentially solve this issue. So if I scroll down, uh, you'll see all the stuff here. So this is the script right here. So if we go back into here, go to system and shell, nano drive add sh, copy all this stuff in there. So uh, I'm gonna close out of this and we'll give it some permissions. Uh, and then we'll run the script. So drive add. Okay, so. Okay, so it is now a couple days later. I have the true NAS server is set up. I've got my six hard drives in here, two SSDs in the back for the boot drive, um, and then I have six drive base still available for future upgrades. Now, let me walk you through kind of the process that it went through for me to set up the server uh, and get true NAS installed and ready to go. So it was quite the uh, task, actually, and it was kind of surprising too because. Um, I was not expecting to have that much work to do to get it set up, uh, but it did take quite a bit of work. There was some commands I had to run in the CLI or the SSH interface of it. Um, and I had to find those from Lawrence Systems over on his uh, community forum page. And essentially these commands just basically set up the drives. So they automatically went through and found the serial number of every single drive. And then since the two platters had different serial numbers, it kind of mapped them out in the tree as that way. Now basically now that, that is done, we have a RAID Z1 pool essentially. So uh, you can think of it basically each of these three drives are in their own pool, essentially kind of like a RAID 5 from what I know. We have 60.08 terabytes of capacity, so that's not bad. Um, but honestly, it's pretty impressive so far. The speeds are actually not what I expected. They are a little slower than I expected, to be honest. So there's still some fine tuning that I need to do within TrueNAS probably to get the speeds up there. Each of these drives should be able to do about half a gig per second. Um, and I'm only getting only I'm only getting five to eight gigabytes per second. All right, so I apologize for the mess on the desk, um, but I do want to talk about these two SSDs I will be installing to serve as my SSD caching for the ZFS pool. So um, these two SSDs together are about two terabytes. I don't think the size really matters. It's just the bigger the size, maybe the better. Um, and with these drives, what I'll be able to do is have a cache of a bunch of data. So as I'm writing or reading from the array, I could have them serve as a metadata cache to kind of speed up the um, process of looking through folders and stuff. I could do a file cache, so it actually kind of caches the files. Uh, there's a lot of options there, um, but I will be using these to do some form of caching. Uh, I'm not sure yet. That will probably be talked about more in my follow-up video. Uh, I did want to just talk about these SSD specifically, and I wanted to thank Tech Mike New York for giving me these uh, two and a half inch adapters so I can use these two and a half inch drives and these three and a half inch bays. Uh, I did not know that um, they even made these things, but they included two of them in the server shipment. Um, so it is really nice to see. I never asked for them or anything, um, and they were in the shipment. And I'm glad that I got these because now I am able to um, have these drives fit nicely in the server and I won't have to worry about any kinds of um, issues when I pull drives out because typically you have to like hold the drive down and push it in. It's kind of jank. Um, but with these adapters, it should be rock solid. So um, that's the SSD caching. So that's about all for this video. Uh, there's lots more to come from TrueNAS, uh, the virtualization, the backups, all that stuff. I'll be making videos about here in the near future. Um, but for now, that is all I got for today. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you again for Tech Mike New York for helping me out uh, with specking out the server. Thank you to Server Part Deals for selling these great affordable drives uh, that have these dual platters, so they are very fast drives. Um, and yeah, that's about all for this video, guys. So thank you for watching. Have a great day, and I will see you all in the next video.